Welcome to The Profile, I'm Gary Dunn and tonight on the couch or chair we have one of the best finger licking picking guitar players you will ever see in your life, Mr Greg Bird. I call him Brother Birdman, how are you Brother Birdman? Brother Dunn, how are you? <laughs> I'm well mate. Good thanks to see for, you. Thanks for coming in. No worries. Really appreciate My it. My pleasure. Uh, yep. Um, I'm going to start, Greg, with where were you born? Uh, I was born in Derbyshire in the UK in well, 1964. Do you have a favourite football team? No, I don't follow football, no. sorry. No. Didn't think so. I've never talked to you about that. And no. That surprises me you were born in England. So. <laughs> yeah, you haven't told me that either. <laughs> <laughs> I came out when I was six. Yep. Don't know what my parents were doing, but I had to get the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so what school did you go to? Uh, Osborne Park Primary. Uh, and then went to Gerowine High School. Wow, one of the one of the bad name high Absolutely schools. Absolutely bad yeah. name. Yeah. yeah. So, um, apart from guitar, yes. You, what instruments do you play? Uh, I started out as a drummer when I was a kid. Yep. Uh, went to drum lessons for about five years, um, and then played in a couple of bands, playing playing drums. The sort of old rock and roll, 50s type stuff. Um, and then moved to guitar probably when I was about 25, 26. Wow. Started fiddling around with that a little bit. Uh, yeah, so, and then and later on then piano. So a double loaded question. Um, mm -hmm. What was the thing that made you decide you were going to play drums? And then My later mum. on. Your mum? Yes. Wow. My mum. And was she, she a drummer or? No, she wasn't a drummer, no. Uh, she, <laughs> she, <laughs> she, 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 she was a fiddle player. A fiddle player? No. She, uh, I don't know, she she had an insight, I think. Um, I must have been tapping around on pots and pans mm. in the house and, and she thought, well, let's get it out of his system. So she sent me to drum lessons as wow. a kid. I didn't want to go. I ended up going for about five years and... Um, yeah, stuck at it. So it was the best thing she ever did, really, yeah. for me. You know, cool. like it's it set me up with it. Yeah. yeah. And then, age twenty five, you started playing guitar. Yeah. Well, what? when I was twenty five, I started. I heard um, Albert Lee actually was the first player that I heard on Hot Licks right. video. Yep. And so I sat down and learnt three of the twenty licks that were on Hot Licks videos, yep. and I got them down to a T. Unfortunately, that's all I could play. <laughs> and uh, I used to go, <laughs> used to go into music shops and uh, play those three licks, and you know people would go, "Jesus, who's that guy?" And then I'd leave because I couldn't play anything else. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Put your best foot forward. Yeah, so. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, that's my only tricks. You, you've got big feet, actually, putting your best foot forward. Obviously, <laughs> so <laughs> you should see me walk backwards. Yeah. We won't go there. First band you played drums uh, uh, with a guy called Elvis George. Yeah, uh, yeah. Elvis George was a <laughs> well. Elvis George was pretty obvious, really, isn't it? I mean, he sang Elvis songs, but he he uh, was a was a friend of my mum's, and he, he was actually a really good singer. But he um, yeah, he, he he had a couple of gigs and said, "Oh, do you want to come and play?" So I started sort of filling in with him, and that was you know I was probably like sixteen or something yeah. on the kit. Doing songs like Delilah and Hound Dog and Jailhouse Rock and stuff like that, um, which where I bought my first album was from a from the first gig that I played. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. So that was that was when I was about fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. I think. I'll cross that question off. Um, so the first guitar playing, yeah, oh, you're known for your signature picking style. Yeah. And that's why I said finger licking picking. Finger licking bit chicken know, picking on guitar. So what what made you you know, get into the finger picking apart from, you know, the. I don't really know to be honest with you. I just I, I something stuck with me with the Albert Lee and yeah. the, uh, I, once I'd heard that, then I sort of sourced a little bit more. Mm. I guess. I mean, I, it, it was obviously a Telecaster that Albert Lee was yeah. playing, and I didn't really uh, know what a Telecaster was back then, so I was learning all those licks on an on acoustic guitar, yeah. but I knew, I liked the sound. Yeah. At the time, I was working at um, part time at Sounds HQ. Eddie Bogerman, you know, exactly. Checks Eddie, in the mail, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eddie Bogerman, <laughs> yeah, a bit of a bit of a classic fella. 
Des Piers. Yeah, Des. Yeah. Yeah, who's um, the money man? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I would uh, pick up guitars from the racks, you know, when no one was in there, and I'd, I'd sort of try and source that sound out, and I'd come across a Telecaster at Sounds HQ and yeah. thought, yeah, that's, that's got to be What year sound. was that you worked at Sounds HQ? Uh, well, I was, yeah, I was like probably 22, maybe 86. So, uh, oh, I was there 79. Yeah? Yeah. Funny, that, that's mm. probably why I didn't see you there, yeah. really. Well, <laughs> seven years. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this beautiful guitar you got here, uh, it's an Emons guitar. I know Alan, Alan Emons, Emons. Yeah, 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 fantastic guy and beautiful gem guitar maker. Yeah, yeah, absolute gem of a man. Yeah. So, so probably over the last couple of years, I, 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 I thought, well, I'll get two guitars off him because I'm not sure if he's going to keep making them or not. Yep. Um, and he just makes a sensational guitar. So. Uh, yeah, so custom built Tally, and I got a Strat off him as well, you yeah. know. So, so one of each. My favourite guitar. Scott. Yeah, oh, he's a genius. Yeah. making guitars. Yeah, so. Is, I mean, can you give us a bit of an insight into the finger licking, picking? Yeah, absolutely. Thing you so, do, or? Uh, yeah, okay. Um. Oh, that's fantastic, mate. <laughs> that's why I called you Brother Birdman. Yeah. <laughs> so you joined, the, your first guitar playing band was Tulsa, 1988. Yeah, it was, yeah. I mean, we were playing to three people at the Stockman Hotel in yep. Midland, yep. so that was pretty scary. <laughs> you got three. You we got lucky. three, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and two of them were doing things they shouldn't have been on a pool table. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the balls weren't in the right and place. The other one, <laughs> and the other one was the barmaid. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was gigs like that, you know. We we were probably doing one a month, I guess, yep. like country clubs, Maylands, country clubs, yep. all that kit, you know, bingo halls really, you know, yeah. like, that kind of stuff. So And um lo and behold your big break, um, Magnificent Seven. Yeah, I can't um, remember the guy's name actually who who approached me. Is it Alan S Simpson? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I believe that was his yeah, name. Yeah, I think it might be Alan Simpson. The guy yeah. with all the cash? Yeah, he's the guy with the cash. <laughs> Stash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was at the Manning Hotel doing a doing a gig with Tulsa and um Al sort of approached me and and said, How'd you like to earn some earn some good money? And I said, Well doing what? He said, playing with Mag 7, and I sort of went, oh, yeah, I don't know about that. You know, give us your number and I'll give you a call. Hmm. And, uh, of course, he left and I'm doing cartwheels thinking, yes, you <laughs> <laughs> beauty. <laughs> you know, so two days later I give him a ring and said, yeah, yeah, let's give it a crack. You know? Yeah. So that was with, uh, well, obviously, Mick, Alan, Lance. Lance and Mel. Mel Melvin T. Yeah. The yeah. Honourable Wright, Melvin T. Lewis. Melvin T. Lewis, yeah. yeah. So you played ramped up versions of country classics, Lombardos. Yeah, we, um, well, yeah, at the time, I suppose, like right in now. the peak, I guess it was Lombardos and then, you know, Metropolis, the City Hotel, Aberdeen, uh, the Floriot on a Thursday night was yeah. absolutely jam-packed. So that was a big change for mm. me, you know, like from three people at the Stockman Hotel yeah. in Midland to, you know, 1500 at the Floriot. Metropolis. Was it, uh, <coughs> it was 1500 at the Florida, yeah. So, is it true that Alan Simpson used to ask for for um, lots of, I mean, apart from the, the fee, lots of cash, spare cash, lots of alcohol, bottles of bourbon? Is it? I, mean, uh, true, I don't think anything that Al says is true, is no? it? <laughs> no, he did, he did, yeah. I mean, like in the day, I guess at Metropolis, we'd probably have a bottle of wild turkey before we went on. Uh, and then there would be spares, so then he would stash the bottles over the course of a year and at Christmas we'd get, you know, 12 or so bottles of oh. bourbon each for Christmas presents. Yeah, a bit, of a, a bit of a champion. And a big sack of cash or did oh, share but, it? No, did there, was, there wasn't any cash. No? No. 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 It was check only. You, 
so the ATO knew oh, about what was going on. Of course. Yeah. 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 It was all about yeah. board. Yeah, it was all about board. Yeah. Well, that's not what I heard, but anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> along comes a big influence on your life, uh, a guy called Phil Warburton. Yeah. Well, Phil Warburton was a big influence because he taught me sort of how to look like a 44-gallon drum on a couple of pool cues. Drink water. Oh, I'll have a drink with you. <laughs> no, nah, Phil was uh, Phil's, a, Phil's a great bloke. I mean, the best thing about him is his face when he makes mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so he's constantly pulling that face. Do you find that? He, do you find that bass players are the ones that make the most mistakes, or they <laughs> kick their amp, or they, or is it? The... Why life in general, or just their playing? They're playing. Oh, yeah. playing. Yeah. Well, he did make a lot of mistakes because I used to go up in the breaks and detune his bass. <laughs> <laughs> purely because most of the time he was lost anyway. <laughs> so I thought, well, let's just lose him a bit further, you know. So we'd, we'd detune his strings yeah. and he'd, he'd sort of start off thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't check <laughs> his tuning before he went on? He never checked his tuning before he went on. He just, he just went for the big note and it wasn't there. Is there anything you would want to say to Phil now on, on camera? Or oh, I, I, love you, I love you, Phil. Yeah. I, lo I love you, Phil, yeah. yeah, yeah. So <laughs> thanks for the insight. <laughs> <laughs> so can you can you tell me and talk to me about the microphone technique and the very funny times with the microphone? I've heard oh, some look, stories. I mean, I'm not really sure I want to go into that, Gary. I mean, that's a fairly disgusting conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I mean, there has been a few incidents where microphones shouldn't have been put in places where they were. Okay. Yeah, and, and yeah, let's just leave that. Would it, would, I mean, oh, okay, I won't go into it, but can I enlighten the viewers a little bit about would, would Phil then sing into those microphones? or would? Well, briefly. Yeah. Briefly. <laughs> briefly, there'd be one note and then he'd sort of pull back a bit you know, <laughs> and realise that something's not quite right. This is no Glen 20, <laughs> if you get where I'm going. <laughs> I get where you're going. <laughs> we'll leave that there. Can you guys please calm down? <laughs> so, is, is there other people here? Isn't there? <laughs> yeah, it's like the car park attendant, the canteen manager, you know, and the masseuse. So you went to Tamworth with an all-star lineup called Seven City Dudes. <coughs> Absolutely, man. Now, that's a fantastic. Was, was there seven city dudes? Was there some from the country, or was it really? So oh yeah, city. no, I think we were all from the city, but yeah, um, so Seven City Dudes was a, a combination of a couple of guys from uh, Magnificent Seven, No City Limits and Dude Ranch. Yeah. Is that Pete Busher? I don't think there was seven, actually. I think there was six of us. Oh, there okay. was, so there was Pete Busher, Richie Danker, oh, yeah. Brian Boy, uh, Pete Stone and right. myself. Yeah. Yeah, I recently, well, you know, recently went went to a magnificent seven gig. Obviously, to see you guys, mm. sensational at the Charles, and um, and I noticed that in the advertising it says magnificent seven, but there's only six people in the photo. Again, I I, I don't know whether that's a thing. Is, yeah, is well, uh, well, 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 as my partner says, um, apparently he doesn't count. Oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> okay, we won't go any further with we that. We won't go there. No. Yeah. So lots after that, um, obviously a great experience for you. Oh, absolutely going to town. Yeah, I mean I went to Tamworth five years in a row. So Seven City Dudes was the first first two times in Tamworth, and then I uh, did a stint with Peter Busher in the Lone Rangers. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we sort of went back three times, three years in a row after that with with Peter mm. Busher and the Lone Rangers. So he, so his bands are minus Albie Pool and you know. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Is it true that? that Alan Simpson got a golden guitar or because I, um, I, I I've don't, never seen I don't know. Either. Has he, has he got a pendant necklace or something like that? I've never seen Alan no. with a golden guitar. Okay. No, no, <laughs> oh, you mean the award? Yeah. 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 Oh, look, possibly mate. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mag Sim was fairly, yeah, fairly up there. I yeah. would have thought, yeah. I don't know. Did he? I, I, I'm asking you. Greg. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure because I, I wasn't with the band when they went to town. Okay. With, so. Oh, okay. Um, but I'm sure they would have. Yep. Cool. Or nominated for one anyway. Yeah. Um, lots of session work. Can you name some of the acts that you that you played yeah, with well, or so, played for? Yeah. Um, well, 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 yeah. Peter Busher did a solo well, uh, so I did some session work for him. Kevin Bloody Wilson, yep. some session work on his stuff. 
Dave Pryor, another guy that's you know uh, a pretty pretty yep. a really good um, country artist, but um, yeah, so the, the heaps in between, you know, like there's there's sort of a lots of areas of session work, like sessions for Lucky Oceans, yep. and kind of in the in the same vein, you know, yep. that country sort of western swingy twang thing. I can't read that out. <laughs> What's it saying? He's trying to hold things up. We used to have a screen, but we had no budget. So the budget's gone. We had a screen. Well, we had no budget. Well, so anyway. you had to sell the screen? Well, we had a, no, we just had a screen, but Al... So you had it. Al well, why could, don't you still uh, have it? He could only do this. Well, you know? what? <laughs> if you had it, what? Where's, well, it, where's it actually gone? I think it... Oh, where's it gone, Mark? Where's our screen? So no budget, <laughs> sell the screen. Yes. Is it, is it, so you think that's the thing that's going to get you the to most pay money? To pay, <laughs> pay for the pizza. Let's so get three dollars for the screen. So he's holding this piece of paper up in pen, and I and you know, I'm like trying. What does it say? Chit, chit. No, I can't read it. Petrol. Something about. What is it? What is it? Can you say what it is? Oh, 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 Cl oh, yeah, okay. Well, Clint's sort of a similar player, yeah, yeah, yeah. A similar he's sort of thing. To, he's trying to stir me up, this bloke. Yeah, right. I th yeah, I can imagine. So, um, you started a duo called Twang Thang. I started a duo called Twang Thang because, um, yeah, I, I, a mate of mine who was a well, it was, a, it was just a, a really good country singer. He sort of sang Sprang, uh, Springsteen stuff really yeah. well. And Sp you were going to say Springsteen. I was going to say Springsteen. Because it was a twang, Sprang, Sprang, Sprang. Yeah, twang, Sting. Sprang. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we formed a duo called Twang Thang. We, uh, and, and all of the backing tracks I recorded at home. So it was like uh, I, t I sort of tried to set the groove because back in the day it was all sort of downloaded MIDI stuff, yeah. which, was, which was all a little bit loose and... Because you were renowned for that big drum thing, or well, the first probably duo doing that sort of stuff. Is that come yeah, I from guess your so. drumming uh, background? Or? Probably, probably more renowned for uh, getting it to groove, yeah. you know, like getting it to sit as opposed to sort of um, downloaded where it wasn't that accurate. So it was sure. more about the groove. And, yeah, it was a, it was a fat sound, yeah. So we, we were sort of doing 250 gigs mm. a year with that duo for about wow. four years. And it was, yeah, it was fun, but it was hard work, you know. I mean, now in a duo, you're lucky if you get 25, don't you, <laughs> you know, these yeah, days. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you played with Pete Busher, Lone Rangers. We had Pete on the show. Um, oh, Pete's a champion, mate. Yeah. I mean, he's the best, probably one of the best country singers in Australia, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's a ple it was a pleasure to play with him. I mean, he, he he's, he's pretty hard when it comes to his quality of music, you know, and I think, like, Playing with him taught me a lot. It taught me to sort of be a lot more accurate yeah. and, and be consistent with what you're doing. So what, you know, he was a taskmaster and pulled you Well, not so much a taskmaster, more, um, uh, you know, a bit of a death stare and you'd pretty well be out, you'd be out of a job. if <laughs> a you like if the you, missus? You, yeah, a little bit like the missus, yeah. A one bum note and you're gone type stuff, yeah. you know, so... Uh, yeah, but it was it was a good it was a good learning experience. A really good good to play with them. You know, top quality musos. Yeah, and like moving sideways a little bit. Other jobs throughout your life, like marriage counselling, or I mean, I know you were pretty good at marriage. <laughs> yeah, I, only you know? from all of my wives. <laughs> how many how many wives? How many have? wives have I had? Oh, too many to mention. Yeah, yeah. honestly, yeah. I mean, how long have we got, boys? <laughs> <laughs> you are. You've obviously got. Quite a few kids and, and lots of grandkids. Uh, I've got five kids and eight grandkids. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, Keeps you busy? Yeah, it does keep you busy, yeah. Well, you would know. You've got a few. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that why you're dressed in black? No, I dress in black just for you. I normally oh, I wear no. blue or grey. Do I look, look like death to you? No, not at all. <laughs> I just... You, you were telling me the story. I mean, you walked in tonight with your blue-black hair yeah, and your blue-black well, thing. And, well, that's I mean, Sarah's. That, that's I saw the, you last week and you were looking a bit ragged and tonight you walked yeah. in you looked like a million bucks. Uh, <laughs> you know? well, it was only 13.99. It was just <laughs> hair dye. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so I just thought I'd wear the black just to compliment you the look way like you look. a champ, mate. Thank yeah, you. yeah, but it's not about you, really, is it? No, it's no. It's about you tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Let's not talk about me. <laughs> okay, so you, you taught yourself boogie piano as well, like a uh, you know, you, and you joined Just Jump. 
and the vibrolators. Just jumping the vibrolators, yeah. Well, uh, I lived with a guy for a while called Bob Hawker, who's a champion no. of a bass player. Well, Absolutely. I mean, who doesn't know Bob Hawker? Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's a champion of a bass player, and um, he's not allowed to knock on doors. <laughs> and a no <man>. hawkers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, and a, and a great piano tuner. So mm. he, he had pianos in his house. Yeah. Um, and I, I sort of started tinkering and he was showing me a few sort of exercises and stuff like that. I kind of got interested in it. And when I moved out on my own, I decided to have a crack at Boogie Woogie. Yeah. So I was sort of doing the 80 hour days, speeding up the process, you mm. know. Uh, I love Boogie Woogie piano. Yeah. And it sort of suited my style of music. So. Yeah. You know, I got as, as close as I can to it, you know. Well, at, at uh, where you are now, at Pippa Studios. Um, well, Pippa... <laughs> yeah, there is a piano. Well, there is a piano at Pippa Studios, yeah. exactly, and, and yeah. And drums. And, and drums. And, and a recording guitars, studio. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Pippa Studios, yeah. You want to know why it's called Pippa Studios? <laughs> well, I know Pippa, the dog. You do know but Pippa. tell us the story. Well, the reason it, it is is because know. every time I go in there and play music, I find her under the studio desk, yep. laying, listening, you know, so, and she's a champion of a dog, so. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know Pippa, there's a German Shepherd. There's a beautiful German yeah. Shepherd, yeah. 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 Okay, well, I'm going to turn the page here, which I'm dreading, because. No worries, John. My English. producer did this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you moved down south to be with your family and set up a home studio. Yeah, I sort of had the I had the home studio sort of set up, um, you know, at, in Perth doing the backing tracks for the duo. But yeah. yeah, I wanted to spend some time down south with the family and concentrate on recording. So I sort of went went a little bit further with the recording side of it, and started getting into sort of world sounds and crossing over from. It's not that I'm over country, but I'm just sort of. Uh, over the standard recording process mm. of it, you know, like the acoustic guitars and drums and bass and twang and guitar. So mm. I sort of started angling. As, as, as technology was getting getting better and things were becoming more available, I was sort of getting into the world sounds. Yeah. And one of my favourite artists is J.J. Kale, so mm. purely because of the groove, you know. Mm. And I thought, well that groove tied in with big world drum sounds and, and yeah. big pads and uh, you know so it's a co so what i do is like a combination of kind of world sounds and that sort of twang country thing in yeah. it you know so and that's where i was what i was trying to keep keep going yeah. down there so you writing now and you and you and you're doing those world sounds you you absolutely new... absolutely so yeah. so one of the world sound songs is king's call on the pub yeah. band legends I volume loved it. one so oh well you just um there it is oh well look pub, pub band legends volume one um you can get it a pro copy just, absolutely uh, call yeah. mark www.procopy.com.au and uh look i i loved your voice on that oh thank yeah, you it was, it was fantastic and al's always told me you can't sing but Oh, I love him. Yeah, he's probably right there, actually. Yeah. But, I mean, no, that's, that sounded that's, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of suited to that to that style. Yeah, yeah. I, for some reason, I always sort of go to the darker sound, but mm. um, I'm, I, I just love the groove. You mm. know, if the groove's locked in, then it all seems to sort of mm. work. You don't, you kind of don't need to layer it with too much if it's fat within mm. itself. You know, yeah. like the groove is fat. So. Yeah. So uh, how long did you stay down south? Because I remember seeing you in Manjumup. You were teaching in Manjumup Music Shop there. Um, yeah, so w when I, I was there for 10 years. I taught, I taught guitar in uh, three of the schools down there for a couple of years. And then yeah. I started working for the a Disability Commission, doing disability support work. Yeah. Um, I was pretty... I, I chilled out for a few years down yeah. there and didn't really do that much at all except playing and recording. Um, and yeah, and then uh, come back up here recently, yeah, yep. four, four months ago. So yep, and so you moved back to Perth. You started working with um, Revolver. So yeah, well. I, I was with. I, I actually Doing the mentors project, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's the yeah. mentors project. Yeah, and and Revolver, I, I was sort of. Ta <laughs> They're ripped. They're yeah, I was. I was I was tapping into that with uh, Vic Manfred at Revolver when I was yeah. younger, when I was about 25. I was sort of going in there learning how to, you know, run desks and, yeah. and I was interested in sound back then. So uh, that's 
kind of where the interest started. Um, and now I'm back here. We're sort of back in Revolver doing yeah. the Mentors Project and, and getting, it, getting that sort of stuff yeah. back up and running, recording back up and running. So moving sideways a little bit, um, yeah. other jobs throughout your life? I mean, I know you're doing disability support now, aren't you? Or is there other yeah. things you've done? Or uh, I tried gigolo once. It just didn't pan out. Um, no, was it, that, how do you think that was? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think, I think it was a size thing, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the the jobs that I've had have been like forklift drivers, warehouse managers, retail managers, ceramic tile laying, all, all sorts of jobs. Yeah. You know, like you sort of whatever you can do to survive. But yeah. in, but in between that has always been playing. Yeah. You know, so it's so just supplement, so supplementing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like all of us. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So um, other, you know, the, what, what would your favourite band of all time be? Is, it, favourite band of all like, uh, uh, probably have to be Floyd, I would think. Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Or ZZ Top or Floyd, one yeah. of the two, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, Dave Gilmore is probably... Oh, he's right. a, yeah, yeah. a bit of a genius. Cries, doesn't it? Just, yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. Um... Perth, best Perth band you saw live? Oh, it'd have to be Night After. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, it would. Well, it would. No, I mean, no, I've never no, actually yet. seen you, but everybody <laughs> tells me you've got... <laughs> <laughs> oh, either that or V Capri, I would have thought. Uh, okay. No worries. No? No, no. I was, no takers I, on that I was one? holding the $100 note up now. I think. No. <laughs> <laughs> Number one hit, nothing. <laughs> But to be honest with you, Gary, when yeah. I when I uh, started playing music, uh, the only bands I ever saw were in you know pubs like Stockman Hotel in Midland. So yeah. you know I couldn't really rate those as my favourite bands. Once I joined Mag Seven, I didn't really have time to see any other Perth yeah. bands. You know, yeah. so I wasn't really in that scene until like eighty nine, ninety type thing. You know, yeah. so. All of those earlier bands, I wasn't really... Probably when you saw The Night After, because that's when we were around then. Uh, so, if you were stranded on a deserted island, yeah, what album would you take with you if you could only take one album? Can it be a double album? It can be a triple album. Knock yourself out. It would be a double album, and what I'd do is I'd put two different ones on either side. Yeah? yeah? What would they be? One would be Danny Gatton, Relentless. Mm, you love Danny Gatton, don't you? I love Danny yeah. Gatton. Um, and the other would, I would have to say, would be Chris Rear Stony Road. Wow, he's a Geordie. Yeah, he is a Geordie, wow. yeah. Unreal. Mr. Midnight. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, great singer. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's been a little bit of health issues lately. He has, he? yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he's, he, he's had cancer scares and gotten over that. And I think, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. So what would your favourite TV show be oh, growing up? Gilligan's Island. Oh. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Um, and probably I Dream a Genie ah. and Get Smart. Yeah. So, I mean, Get Smart, great. I Dream a Genie, great. But who is your favourite on Gilligan's Island? Um, no, no, it wasn't Gilligan. I'm not asking no, you. No, I'm no, asking I don't, him. no, no, I never liked Gilligan. He's always done this to you, hasn't he? I thought he? he was a fool. He tries to speak for you all the time. <coughs> he, he does, a, yeah, he does that, yeah. Mm. Um, the favourite one on Gilligan's Island would have to be Thurston Howell the oh. Third. I would say. Yes. <laughs> Hurry up, Gilligan! My hand's getting moonburn. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have any unfulfilled ambitions? Uh, no, I don't, Gary. I've got no regrets and no unfilled ambitions. I, I just want to uh, continue playing music and just try and, try and be happy and at peace, you yeah. know, and just do what you do. Cool. Um, what would you put on your gravestone? Uh, the neighbours are dead quiet. Uh, <laughs> is it that time already? I don't know, anything like that. Something like that, yeah. Something like that, yeah. And um, can you tell, tell us something about yourself? that nobody knows? No. Nothing at all? No, that's why they don't know it. Okay. And you, you don't want to share that with us? No, I don't, no. Can I tell something? Yeah, you can. You can tell me something you don't know. Well, you're with one of my best friends. You, you're oh, with one of my best friends. Oh, absolutely, Sarah. She's a 
champion. Yeah. yeah so um, one of the reasons why I came up here, actually. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah, so I met I met Sarah. She's a, a beautiful lady, and I've yeah. moved in with her, and and now we're yeah moving along with music and various other projects yeah. and. Yeah, so it's, it's been fantastic. I'm happy for you both. and Thank you. And uh, I, I remember the night you met at the Pup Legends gig at the Charles. Absolutely, July the 15th. Wow, you remember it better than I do. Yeah, it was about uh, 1.30 in the morning, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you remember how many seconds? Or? <laughs> <laughs> but I remember how many texts there were at four in the morning. Yeah, I think we, but, yeah. we were giving her a lift home, actually, and you'd started within... Within five minutes. Oh, she started first, I think. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. So, so good <laughs> looks, mate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, she's an absolute champ. Yeah. Right? She's a champ. Yeah, Beautiful love it a person. bit. Beautiful. Wonderful love friend. it a bit. Hmm. So, any, do you want to ask me a question or anything? or? Um, did you want to learn a guitar lick? What sort of lick? Oh, I can't play like you, mate. Oh, well, I mean, that's why I said learn. Okay. Yeah, okay. You want to have a crack at one? Well, show me. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, all right. Um, I don't have a pick or anything, but this will be All right, so this is the didgeridoo effect. Yeah. All right. So is there something to do with your right hand there? Oh, yeah. It's, it has got a lot to do with it. Yeah, let's, oh, let's I don't see, know whether I can do this. this. Do that. <laughs> nice one, mate. <laughs> Picking away, mate. <laughs> nice yeah, country one. Licks. Good mate, on you, mate. Thanks very Good much, Greg, you. for coming in. Really Absolute really pleasure enjoyed, to see uh, you, brother Dunn. Thanks yeah. for having me, guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, that's it for the profile this week. Uh, thanks for joining us. Play it out, Greg. Come on. Tube the dog. Thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you.